good all all the time. Praise his name. I guess Brother David is not feeling well tonight. And Brother Paul is not here, so we'll do something. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ask if anyone has a need for prayer. That's uh, Charles. Charles. Yeah. His brother Mike is not doing well either. No, he's not. So remember, remember them in prayer. So anyone else? Uh, Sister. Sister Shirley stepped tonight. All right. Sure. Just remember that name. Well, praise the Lord. I'm gonna do something different tonight. I'm not gonna lead singing. But I'm going to have the sisters to get us a couple songs in the beginning after we have prayer. Come on, Brother David, lead us in prayer. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you once again, Father, for this blessing, Lord, that you bestowed upon each one of us. Father, that you've called us out of the world and called us into your great family. And Lord, what a privilege that is, Father. And Lord, may we never take that for granted. And Lord, we just ask and pray that you'll forgive us each one of our shortcomings, Lord. Forgive us, Father, of anything that would hinder us of our walk with you. And Lord, if there be anything that would cause us, Lord, to sway, we ask, and Father, that you would reveal that to us. Yes. And Lord, we ask and pray that you'd be with each of the needs that's been brought before you this evening. Lord, Sister Shirley, that's not feeling well, and Sister Jimmy's family, Lord, we ask and pray that you'd be with them, Lord. Yes. Father, just comfort our sister, Lord, and grant her peace. And Father, we just ask and pray that you'd be with the saints, Lord, throughout this land, throughout this world, Father, that each one would feel your presence, Lord. And Father, may you watch over each one and protect them and keep them safe. And Father, we just ask and pray that you'd be with us, Lord, throughout this service. And Father, we lift all things up and commit them into your hands. And we thank you, Lord, for all you do in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Yeah. 
battle's over we shall wear a crown we shall wear a crown yes we shall wear a crown when the battle's over we shall wear a crown in that new jerusalem we'll wear a crown we'll wear a crown we'll wear a bride and a shining crown speak his name but when the battle's over we shall wear a crown we shall wear a crown yes we shall wear a crown when the battle's over we shall wear a crown in that new skies on flowery beds of ease while others fought to win the prize and sailed through stormy seas 
But when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown. We shall wear a crown. We shall wear a crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in that new Jerusalem. To face must I not stem the flood? Is this vile world a friend to grace to help me on to God? But when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown. We shall wear a crown. Yes, we shall wear a crown. When the battle's over, we shall wear skies on flowery beds of ease while others fought to win the prize and sailed through bloody seas but when the battle's over we shall wear a crown we shall wear a crown yes we We shall wear shall wear a crown in that new Jerusalem. We'll wear a crown. We'll wear a crown. We'll wear a crown. We'll wear a a bride in a shining crown. And And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in that new Jerusalem. We'll wear a crown. Young People Faith Assembly. Thank you. Done a wonderful job. You may be seated. Sister Glenda, Sister Lori, will you all come sing for us? And then Sister Debbie, get us a song for us. The only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. The only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. With all eyes, frustrations, I need you and I know I do Cause the only real peace that I have Dear Lord is in you Life is a few days of trouble a wise man once said but I'll not complain for I'm sheltered I'm clothed and I'm fed 
But many's the trials my wants and my dreams put me through. And the only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. The only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. The only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. With all life's frustrations, I need you. the only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. The higher I've soared in my dreams, the harder I fall. Sometimes I've wondered if dreams are worth dreaming at all. But my disappointments can keep me blinded and The only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. The only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. With all life's frustrations, I need you and I know I do. Cause the only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. The only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. The only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. With all life's frustrations, I need you and I know I do. Cause the only real peace that I have, dear Lord, is in you. Amen. Thank you for that tonight. Very beautiful song. Thank you. All right, sister and sister Michelle, you all get ready to sing.
Mm -hmm. Are you weary from the battle you're fighting? Does it seem like the storm just won't break? Is there a mountain in front of you that doubt says will never move? And you wonder, will God make a way? <clears throat> well, tell me. to carry you through. Tell me a day he was less than almighty when he could not roll back the tide. Child, when you look back, you're gonna find there was never strong in the Lord and remember to take hold of faith and stand firm. You can be confident the Lord keeps his promises. If you doubt him, just read through. And tell me a time he's not been faithful. Tell me a morning his mercies were new. Tell me a moment he wasn't able to carry you through. Tell When he could not roll back the tide, child, if you look back, you're gonna find there was never a time. <clears throat> he can work miracles through the impossible if you don't be just go on and try and tell me a time he's not been faithful tell me a morning his mercies weren't new tell me a moment he wasn't able to care Tell me a day he was less than almighty when he could not roll back the tide. Child, when you look back, you're gonna find there was never a day. When he could not roll back the tide, child, when you look back, you're gonna find there was never a time. Amen. Thank you.
It's easy to think it's been me all along who accomplished the things I have done. At times I can feel myself swelling with pride as if I alone fought the battles and won. But I know the truth, Lord, it all comes from you. And now I want to give you the praises you're due. You give and you give again and again. Every gift I can trace to your hand. Out of your love and compassion for men, you give and you give and you give again. is there I am strong I don't understand but it's true so I will not glory except in the cross and I'll carefully give all the honor to you cause I know the truth from you and now I want to give you the praises you're due you give and you give again and again every gift I can trace to your hand out of your love and compassion for Brother Daniel, have a song for us. This old world's no place for living, not enough caring, not enough giving. Sometimes clouds of sin and sorrow hide the way. But this life with stormy weather ain't gonna be my home forever. Gonna be moving one of these days. I'm gonna be moving, moving away. Gonna be moving one of these days. When I leave this life behind me, troubles and cares never gonna find me gonna be moving one of these days there won't be any time for crying no more sickness or dying joy awaits me in that mansion far away when i rest from all my labor lord's gonna be my next door neighbor gonna be moving one of these days i'm gonna be moving moving away gonna be moving one of these days when i leave this life behind
find me. Troubles and cares are never going to find me. Going to be moving one of these days. No more sickness toward dying. Joy awaits me in that mansion far away. When I rest from all my labor, the Lord's going to be my next door neighbor. Going to be moving one of these days. I'm going to be moving, moving away. Going to be moving one of these days. When I leave this life behind me, troubles and cares are never going to find me. Going to be moving one of these days. I'm going to be moving, moving away. Going to be moving one of these days. When I leave this life behind me, troubles and cares are never going to find me. Going to be moving one of these days. I'm going to be moving, moving away, going to be moving one of these days. When I leave this life behind me, troubles and cares are never going to find me. Going to be moving one of these days. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Amen. Move his own. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I think we got young sisters ready to go now. <laughs> may God bless her. All right, you may be seated. Brother. Sister Jessica. <laughs> Y'all. And then I'm going to have all the young people sing. The brothers and sisters. Sorry. <clears throat> and horse riding frogs again. <laughs> <clears throat> Throughout this land today there are men who have heard their call. They are our faithful ministers, God's watchmen on the wall. There is a special crown for them in heaven, so I'm told. God bless these faithful ministers, they're watching for our souls. Watchmen, oh watchmen, I see an ancient city surrounded by a wall. And as the night approaches, I hear the watchmen call. To all God-fearing citizens, let each heart prayerful be. It seems there's been a rumor approaching enemy. Watchmen, watchmen, tell me what you see. Will there be safety for each family? We're counting on you, watchmen. Please don't let us down. Wake us from our slumber if danger comes around. Throughout the night he watches. He never sleeps at all. He feels responsibility, this watchman on the wall. And when the night is long and dark, it seems I hear a prayer. 
Oh God above, look down in love and keep us in your care. Watchmen, watchmen. At last the morning has arrived and every heart there's joy. Our friend has done his duties, the city's not destroyed. I can we show our gratitude for what the watchman's done? He stayed on guard so we'd have peace until the morning comes. Watchmen, watchmen, tell me what you see. Will there be safety for each family? We're counting on you, watchmen, so please don't let us down. But wake us from our slumber if danger comes around. Thank you very much. I remember when Brother Christ used to sing that song. Yeah, you may be seated. Young people, all of you, the brothers and sisters. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty. Shout to the Lord. Oh. 
Majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hand. I appreciate these songs tonight. Thank the Lord for him having his way. Not just getting up here to, uh, to try to demonstrate themselves, but getting up here and to praise the Lord. Young people and on into the different ages, we thank you. Thank you very much because God is real at any age. And I praise him for his wonderful grace to me and for his grace to you. So I'm going to turn it over to Brother Kevin at this time. May the Lord bless our brother. Bless you. Thank you, Brother Allen. Appreciate that. And appreciate all the songs and the blessings of the Lord. Would you agree with me that his presence is in this place? Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father and Almighty God, as we bow our hearts and our heads to you tonight, Lord, acknowledging, Lord, you are the creator of heaven and earth. And your presence is here among us, Lord, and overshadowing this place. And Father, I just want to commit all things unto you and ask that you would sanctify my heart and my lips and my thoughts and all that would be said, Lord, that it would be to uplift and edify your people. That it would bring strength, Lord, and encouragement to every heart and soul. And that you would be glorified and honored in all. I commit it to you now, Lord. May you have your way, for I ask it in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. You know, as the songs were being sang, and I just thought to myself, you know, this... This is not for a scoffer. This is not for a naysayer. This is not for an unbeliever. But I believe that we have come and gathered together 
as believers. Amen. No man could he, he put this together. No man could design it. No man could think it up. No man could plan it out. But from before the foundation of the world was, it was planned out. And you and I today, brother, sister, are seeing it come to its fulfillment in your and my life that God would have purposed in it. Amen. All I can say is all glory and honor be to God Almighty and to His Son Jesus Christ that gave His life that made it possible that we could gather together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. I appreciate all of the songs and the message this morning and how blessed we are to know truth. You know, the, the more that time goes, and I realize it more and more. You know, you're, you're not going to find, uh, you're not going to find this just anywhere. Amen. I remember, uh, I remember back when a preacher was here and made the comment that if someone were to preach 95% truth in his church, he would be all right with that. But you know what? That's not all right with the believing bride of Christ. Amen. And Brother Bud, he quickly brought out of the scripture which I wrote down tonight, which is Isaiah 52, 8, that says, Thy watchman shall lift up the voice together, shall lift up the voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Now if the Lord would go to so much as to have that prophecy or those words written to be fulfilled in this is for your and my day, we are seeing this. Hallelujah. How much more would it be that he would have it to be 100% accurate, not withholding anything? As Brother Allen touched on this morning, there is nothing being withheld for all that is given through that of the ministry. They are sharing their hearts with the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Tonight I took a title. Brother Allen, he didn't know. This morning when he mentioned Matthew 24, he had no idea. I don't talk to Brother Allen about what I'm going to preach. He doesn't ask me. And I don't ask him and he don't share. You know, it's because God is in control of it. That's what it is. But I took for my title right from the book of Matthew 24. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Jesus said, but my words shall not pass away. Right. Hallelujah. We are standing on something that is solid. We have been taught and our understanding, our revelation of the word of God is sure and it is a man just as the word of God is because that is what the source of it is. How many understands me? It is founded on the word of God. Our understand, our revelation is not some man's idea. Hallelujah. It's not some man's idea, but it is divine revelation from God of his word. Tonight, when I say you will not find this anywhere, brother, sister, this thing is getting very narrow. <laughs> I know early on when I begin to preach, I say we're coming down to the pinnacle to the nitty-gritty. 
Amen. I believe that we are going to be. We are that people, not going to be. I believe that we are that people that Paul said would be alive and remain at the coming of the Lord. How many is with me? That too has to be fulfilled. Let us turn to the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter. I'm going to read just four verses here. Starting in verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. We all know that is talking of Israel. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, Know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Now tonight... I'm not standing amongst unbelievers. I know exactly who I'm standing before. But I said, when I started, this is not for scoffers, naysayers, unbelievers. So let us know something. Used to, it would trouble me. I'm just speaking to you from my heart. Used to, it would trouble me when those that have walked this way would all of a sudden come up with some idea or a question and begin to doubt. It would trouble me. But I want to tell you from my experience, that is leaving me. You know why? It's not for them. You say you are not showing compassion that you talked about. I cannot change a man's heart. I've spoken of these conscious choices that are happening. Many have walked through the doors and they have heard the same words that you and I have. They have been exposed to the understanding and the revelation of God's word in the fullest in this hour of time. And to go away and say, I'll search for something else. Or I'm going to find something else. There's nothing else to find or search for. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're looking at a picture today. Fulfillment of prophecy that we're living in. That should be, and I know it is, it is speaking to every heart that is sitting here tonight. Is it not? We are looking at events that are unfolding as Brother Allen was speaking this morning. Things are moving. Hallelujah. In Israel. Amongst the leadership and amongst the people, there is something being stirred. So is it within the bride of Christ. Just as Brother Allen there, he said, the move is on for the bride. I believe the move is on. Are you with me there too? This generation has been under attack. But I'm going to pull out some information and I'm going to read to you when it looks bleak, the unbeliever will take an ulterior path. 
Hallelujah. But we know what the Word of God says, and Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall never pass away. Not pass away. No, sir. There was an old song, I believe the Happy Goodman sang it. I don't know if you ever heard them. Rusty Goodman got on the piano. They could really make quite a thunderous sound. But you know what? Even them, as time went on, what happened to that singing group? Oh, Vestal Goodman, she could look so holy. It's more than a look. It's a life lived. Hallelujah. But she looked so holy on that stage for so long. But when the other group started coming along with a newer look, what happened? She had to start changing. Off went the hair. Off went the skirts. She started wearing her slacks. Why? She was trying to cater to the crowd. But tonight, we're not catering to anybody. Hallelujah. No, sir. You understand what I'm saying? We are speaking to the bride of Christ. That's why I've always said that. When I started preaching, I said, I know who I'm preaching to. I am preaching to the bride and the bride only. Hallelujah. Just as Isaiah, when God called Isaiah to take a message to the children of Israel of their impending judgment, think about it. There he saw that great scene in the heavens. He saw, let's go there and read that. Hallelujah. That's worth turning to and reading, I think. Isaiah chapter 6, I believe. If we run out of time, there's going to be more Sunday nights, Lord willing. Yes. Isaiah chapter 6, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting up on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, and twain he covered his, with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. He laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and whom will go for us? Then, I, then said I, Here I am. Send me. Hallelujah. There's some men today that have answered a call that's for a specific purpose. Just as it is written in Ephesians of a five-fold ministry, let us wake up and realize what is happening. Hallelujah. Some may say, don't say that to me. I believe it, Brother Kevin. I'm not saying it to you as an individual, but realize the voice has got to go out. You have no idea who's listening. You sat there as a believer. I know you are. I don't doubt anybody's testimony in this building. Hallelujah. I don't believe if you didn't believe something, you wouldn't even be sitting here right now. Hallelujah. God is real. This, 
This gathering together is ordained of God. There is a ministry that is called for the perfecting of the saints. I'm not saying this to lift up men. That's not my point. But there is a process in which God is ordained to bring it to be. And we can't miss that. Jesus. You know, there in Matthew, he even dealt with that. He said, many shall come in my name, saying, I am of Christ, or I am anointed. Listen to me. Think of all the ones that have passed through. Come in like a bang. Took people off their feet. Oh, my, he's anointed. Look at him. Listen to him. How magnificent. He can preach just like a computer. You know what I'm saying that for. But all along, it was artificial intelligence. He said, many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, or I am anointed. But then what did he say? And shall deceive many. Then you see his apostle John. There it is, writings in the book of 1 John. He wrote this, little children. It is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. Right. Brother, sister, I want to lay something out very plain tonight. There is that which is of God. And everything else, I'm going to use a word someone else used. And I'm going to throw it right back at him. Everything else is rubbish. Why would you say that? Because I'm speaking to the bride of Christ. The highest calling in Christ Jesus. It's not in about any other calling for us. I'm not here, Brother Jerry, just hoping that I can make it as a foolish virgin. Amen. Think about that just a minute. Amen. I'm not here just hoping I can make it as a foolish virgin. Amen. I'm not wanting to just have on a white robe. I'm not wanting to just be in the great multitude. I'm wanting. No, I am what God said I am. I am bride of Christ. You know, I didn't ask those young girls to sing that song this morning. Beautiful song. I don't direct anybody, neither does Brother Allen. Oh, he asked somebody to sing a certain song that he mentioned this morning. That's all right to request something. I didn't even know that song existed this morning, those young girls sang. I don't know, maybe they wrote it. Did you write that song? God bless you. Beautiful words. Beautiful words, beautiful young people. As they come up here, I just had to say, praise the Lord. Brother, sister, we've got the finest of the finest of the finest. Hallelujah. And I encourage every one of them, you keep on keeping on. You are on the right track, the only track that will take you to eternal life. Eternal glory with God our Father. Hallelujah. You love the Lord? I'm getting to where I'm supposed to be, but I've taken a long distance roundabout.
You don't have to turn there. But I want to quote to you out of the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter. There in the first verse it says, Wherefore seeing we are, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. Hallelujah. You know, we can find maybe when we travel. You know, the airlines, they have a limit on your baggage. You put it up there on the scale, and most of the time it's 50 pounds. And they watch that pretty close. I've actually known him to let it slide if it was 51 or 52, but that's not very often. I think that depends on whether it's a full flight. But you know, you pack your stuff. And I know my wife does. She's got a little scale. And as she's packing that suitcase, she's constantly measuring when she gets close to the end. And maybe sometimes there's things that's got to come out. What is it? It's excess baggage. It's excess baggage and it throws you over the limit. Hallelujah. And really when it comes down to it, well, maybe you'll put it in your carry-on. But you watch these airlines are going to do with that, get do away with that. Or they'll start charging. They got to find a way to pay for bolts to go on the doors. Because their doors are flying off. They don't know why. Wheels are falling off. Doors are blowing out. What a time. Then you've got a homosexual over the transportation department. He's not saying anything. What a messed up world. But you may put that excess in your carry on. I'm speaking in the natural. But sometimes it comes down to, you know what? I really just didn't need that extra pair of shoes. It was putting two more pounds in there. Oh, I'd like to have them. But I really don't need those extra shoes. And when you get to look in there, how many has ever went on a trip and packed your suitcase and got back home and said, I didn't wear that, 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 that. Well, I could have packed half of what I took. You don't have to raise your hand and, and expose yourself to that, but I think we're all guilty. Although I travel pretty light. <clears throat> But we find that we can have excess, more than is necessary. And here he's saying, lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. What is sin really? Sin is really unbelief, isn't it? It is. I won't go into the story, but you remember what Br Brother Branham said about the woman that questioned him. When he was preaching and he he said all of this and speaking of smoking and he said something about it not being a sin and she said, there she was on the front seat. She said, Brother Brandon, pray tell me if, if all this is not sin, what is? If smoking is not sin and drinking is not sin and all this, then tell me what is? It's unbelief. That's what leads to all that. That's right. He says, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who is for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. I feel, brother, sister, No, I want to stop using the word feel. I know. It's more than a feeling. It's a no-so. It's a no-so. Mm -hmm. 
this generation, he said, will not pass until all these things be fulfilled. On or around November 29 of 47, I wrote these little notes down. It's when the UN adopted the Resolution 181, also known as the Partition Resolution. I'm not smart. I had to look that up. I don't have that here. But just showing you that even before we get to the day that you and I are living, to be able to see the progression and the fulfillment of what we're looking at today, even back in 1949, God had his hand in what was happening. Then on May 14 of 1948, Israel declared their independence as a sovereign nation. We've seen her flourish ever since. We've seen her fight wars in which without the hand of God being involved, she would have been annihilated. She had no chance. I remember all the stories that Brother Jackson told. That man was called of God to fulfill the office of apostle. I'm not ashamed of that. No siree. I'm not ashamed of it. Because I recognize it. How many times have I ever said there's got to be continuity from the time God called Brother Branham and he started his ministry and we see all that the man went through. What was it? Why did he go through the things that he did and lost his wife and his children and all? God was directing that man's life. And he was getting him in the position where he could use him for what he called him for. You say, well, that's, I don't know if I want to serve a God that would do such a thing. I do. I want to be right where God can use me. I want to be right in line with, the, with God. Hallelujah. That's right. Every man that God calls, he scourges, corrects. Is that right? Is that what the scripture says? Why is that? God's going to use that man. He's going to get him in a position where he can use him. That's right. We've seen the nation of Israel born. We've seen her flourish. We've heard it preached of how God is going to do a great work. And how she's going to get all of her land back. All of this is under attack. That's all right. As I read that prophecy to you the other day, I've not forget it, forgot it since I read it. You know, when God, he, when God reveals his word to you, now there's a great responsibility. And, and you, you're not going to walk away from something and then say, but God, I did not know. You did know. Amen. You did know. And in that prophecy, it said they would stand before us. I'm not looking for that. I don't want that to happen. But I, yet, that came through a prophecy and said those that have walked away and declared that there was error will have to stand before you 
and admit the error of their way. You remember me reading that? How many thinks, how many knows? I, you don't have to raise your hand, but this is real. You know, I think back to Ananias and Safari. All they had to do was that which was right. Is that right? That's, that's all they had to do. But yet, they, they connived something in their heart that was not right. No one here. But I believe that we have seen such. They connived something in their heart to where they lied to the Holy Ghost. I believe that we are in an hour that is so very serious. That's why I said we have gathered here as believers. It was mentioned last week, I believe, there in Matthew 13 about the great net that was cast out. This was Brother Branham's ministry. And it said it gathered fish of every kind. And then they started the separation process. Brother, sister, how many would agree with me that there's been that separation process? From the time that Brother Branham's ministry started. Then it went into the phase, I'll say, not Brother Branham, but he told Brother Jackson, Brother Junie, something's getting ready to happen. When it does, you stick with the word. You stick with that word. There was something of a protective nature that God had already handpicked the man. For he saw his heart and his desire to do the will of God. As our brother was preaching this morning, there he was, still in the Methodist church, when he heard the seals. But then something started pulling harder. And the more he heard and the more he understood, he realized, I cannot stay in this system. God is in control of it all. I will have a little video. I think I'll have time to show it. I had mentioned it a few weeks back. Of this lady, and I'll read her testimony. A hundred years old. You'll see her in the video. Brother Dustin got that loaded for me. She was there the day that the attack happened. On the border there with Gaza. And they put her in a safe room for, I believe, 30 days. Then she was moved to the Dead Sea in a hotel. But she said, I want to go back. I want to go back to where I was. There is something that has been instilled in the Jewish people. They are, God is putting something in their hearts. Not only them, but the leadership. I want to read her testimony right now. I'll show her video just a little bit later, but listen to this. I can't pronounce her name. Yokovid Gold. Returned to her home in Kibbutz Sa'ad. Is that how you pronounce that? Okay then I can say it that way. No one would ever know the difference. <laughs> Four months.
months after she was evacuated due to the start of the war between the Hamas terrorist organization and the state of Israel. Yochavid, who is 100 years old, is the sister of the late Rabbi Yehoshua Nerwith. This is her story. On October 7, she was in the kibbutz safe room for 30 hours after the attack. The attack. Today she returned home, the date of this article, to kibbutz Sa'ad in the Gaza envelope after nearly five months in a hotel at the Dead Sea. Her late husband, Shmuel, was the security officer for Kibbutz Sa'ad during the War of Independence. We have a lot of families here that have had loved ones fight for this country. There's been a lot of Jewish men and women that have fought for Israel. And they're just as patriotic and God is adding something to this. You know, Brother Jackson used to say when the true red-blooded American wakes up in this country, you're going to see something. And we're kind of getting to the boiling point. In 1936, when she was 12 years old, she went to the Berlin Olympics as a curious child. She was handed flowers to hand to Adolf Hitler as he entered. She stood with the flowers in her hand, and when Hitler passed by, they looked each other in the eye. That had to be a traumatic experience. At 12 years old, she knew who he was and what he was doing and what he had done. Jokovic said says that she was so frightened that she turned around and ran home. I think it would frighten me to look the devil in the eye too. But here's, listen to this. I didn't go searching for these. Today, today, it is possible to meet a Jew who looked Satan himself, Hitler, in the eye and had the privilege of immigrating to the land of Israel to be one of the founders of the Kibbutz Sa'ad before the establishment of the state to see many descendants and to raise a glorious family. How many believes this generation is still alive? And well. When you see this lady, you won't guess her to be 100 years old. But I'm looking at something even deeper than that. But that's a resiliency that's in the heart and the soul of these Jewish people. I'm excited. I'm excited to see this unfold. I'm excited to see them get their land back. I'm excited to witness the rebuilding of the temple. This is another testimony that caught my eye in this story. The title of it is, How Do We Emerge from Darkness into Light?
This difficult question was asked by Rabbi Chaim Sampson. At this event in New York, the gathering of these Jewish people, they've got a question in their mind just See, they're looking for something. They know something's going on. How do we do this? God's got it all under control. Among all the lectures and conventions on Shabbat, his answer to this question stood out. So how do we emerge from darkness into light? Because today there's so much sadness and grieving he said, I want to tell you about a five-year-old child who lost his parents in the Holocaust. He was forced to leave his beloved home and together with his big brother endured a slave labor camp, a concentration camp, a death march, hunger, cold, and daily horrors. At the age of eight, when the war ended, he was illiterate. Instead of going to school, he had to move dead bodies at Buckenwald and simply did not know how to read or write. He made Aliyah by boat, and when he arrived in Israel, he was immediately sent to a detention camp in Atlit. What kind of future would you have envisioned for a child like this? Orphaned, abandoned, poor, without education, without unimaginable fears and traumas. With um, unimaginable fears and traumas. I want to invite this child to the stage, he said. He is already 87 years old. He is known as Rabbi Yisrael Mir Lau. He rehabilitated himself and progressed in life. He married and raised a wonderful family. Some of this I just can't pronounce. He is the chairman. This is just telling who he is. He is a chairman of the Yad Vashem Council and one of the most famous spokesmen on Israel's behalf and on behalf of the Jewish people throughout the world. Let us hope that children from Be'eri Sederat can gain strength from this story. Here's the other portion that stuck out to me. This is not a personal story of Yisrael, the orphan child. This is the story of the nation of Israel. We have living proof in our generation of the ability to emerge from disaster to rebirth. It is a great privilege to hear the story of Rabbi Luau, our story, especially during this time. May everyone hear the good news. Brother, sister, just as you and I are here tonight by God's design, back in 1930s, 40s, 50s, whenever it would have been, that these people were born. Do you know God's hand was upon them? When he said this generation shall not pass, something had to bring this to be. Don't you believe that, Brother Jerry? Do you know if I were to turn, I would never. But to hear of the truth that we have heard, See and understand and know it to be the truth. 
but then turn and deny it. What is left? I believe you say you're being way too hard and way judgmental. I am just preaching what the Word of God says. It said they will wind up where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because, why do I say that? Because to, much, to whom much is given, much is required. To the man that went to the Baptist church and smoked his cigarettes, whatever church, I shouldn't have said Baptist, any of them. They probably all allowed that. They took their smoke breaks and what have you. But he never did make a move to know God in his fullness or to learn of his word and be revelated in it. That man will have more of an opportunity to receive grace from God than anyone that has heard truth and turned from it. So I was watching the news the other day. This anti-Semitism that is so prevalent. And you know something has to happen in this country. Something has to happen. But you, you, you all heard it this morning. I heard it. A year from now, it wasn't prophecy. But I'll tell you why I believe it carries a lot of weight. A year from now, things are going to look much different. How many heard that? Between now and then, we've got an election. Only God knows the outcome of it. But brother, sister, as much violence as we're seeing and corruption, what will it be like? Somebody's not going to be happy with the outcome of this election. And we're looking George Washington's vision right in the eye. How many wants to be ready? Yes, me too. We're looking George Washington's vision right in the eye. I don't think it's going to be a, a pretty picture. I won't say too much. I don't want to put no fear in any young people. And I'm not going to say it's going to be war in the streets, but it might be war in the streets in some places. You love me? And I... I have to do all that is required of me to tell what the truth is. <laughs> Sister Carmen, I'm going to say what you had told me, if that's all right. About We went down to that funeral home, and that young man, very polite man, I could just tell that there was something that was affecting him. I could see that. I wasn't trying to play on it. I just realized that something there was going on. He saw, he saw something different in Brother Allen and I, and, and he was watching, and he was listening. We get back home. Sister Carmen says, he's already reached out to me. And he's been on our website. 
on the way home, I, I, you know when I started preaching down there and I thought, Lord, I was inspired by the sign. I promised to put that up, but I haven't got there yet. By that billboard sign there that was posted by our hotel, it said, Stand with Israel. Remember what God said. He said, I will bless those that bless you and I'll curse those that curse you. I was inspired when I saw that sign, Brother Jerry. Two big star of David's up there. It was big, if not bigger than these billboards out here. And it said, stand with Israel. It inspired me. And I, I told him, I said, you know, a funeral is not for the dead. It's for the living. And I want to say something that will help someone. We can say all we want to about trying to comfort and all that. And I think it should be said. But then there should be time given to be of a help in a spiritual way. To lead someone to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Shake their thinking. And I believe he has got shook. We was coming home and Brother Allen said... I, I don't know what we were talking about, something about the services. And I said, well, we were talking about the messages and he's bragging on me and I was bragging on him. He said, we'll just brag on one another. How's that? I said, well, okay, that's all right. You know what? I'd never get ahead of this brother for nothing in the world. And you all know that. Somebody calls me and they have a certain question. I'll say, you have to ask Brother Allen. He's a pastor. You don't come to me with that. But we was coming home. He said, Brother Kevin. He said, if they don't hear it there, where are they going to hear it? Isn't that the truth? That is the truth. If they don't hear it there, where are they going to hear it? And I know there were souls that were touched through Brother Allen's message stirred them, got them to realizing this is not the end of when you die in this life. It's not the end. There is a resurrection. Hallelujah. But I, I was watching the news the other day and this anti-Semitism is so prevalent. And it seems like that it's, it's so accepted you, you, you know what? You, you can't attack or speak against any other race of people, but if you speak against the Jews, it's all right. What's wrong with that? It's a worldwide thing. Turn with me. Zechariah 12. I read this in the funeral. Some people think, well, you're going to wear it out. You can't wear out the word of God. allergy season. How many know that? If you don't know, you're going to get ready to hear some of it. And, and, and my grass is growing real good for those that's interested in knowing. I got out there and put 100 pound of grass seed on my yard. I thought, Lord, you know how poor the soil is, but you, you just Bless it, Lord, I, I need some grass. I went out the other day and the sun was shining so bright there as I was leaving for work. I'm thankful for the, the sunshine in the morning. It's beautiful. I got down there and I looked and I said, oh, Lord, it's pressed down and running over. <laughs> I'm only mowing three days a week. It looks so good. <laughs> I was going to fertilize it, but now I'm afraid to. <laughs> but I thank the Lord for life, don't you? Brother Branham, he used a blade of grass to, to describe God and, and life. Remember that? Amen. God's in, 
everything. Hallelujah. In all life. It comes from God. Okay, Zechariah chapter 12. Listen to what is written here. It says, The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens and layeth the foundation of the earth and formeth the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about. When they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people, all that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces. I remember Brother Jackson going over that. And he said, though all the nations of the world gather against her, he said, he will destroy their economies. They may think they have the upper hand. They may think that they've got the power to persuade leaders and cause a different outcome. But let me tell you who is really in control. He's got the power to withhold the rain. He's got the power to cause a tsunami to wipe a whole country off the map. I wouldn't want to stand against Israel. Though all the people of the earth shall be gathered, be gathered together against it. In that day, saith the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment and his rider with madness, and I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah and will smite every horse of the people with blindness. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts, their God. I see something rising up in the heart of the Jewish people. Some may think it lies in the hands of leaders. <laughs> but I see something that is lying in the hearts of the Jewish people which the leaders will be Jewish. They are Jewish. The other day when they come out against Netanyahu, Schumer, who's supposed to be a Jew, he said, Netanyahu, you are the problem. You're standing in the way of a two-state solution, and I say, praise the Lord, keep standing. Stand your ground. There'll never be a two-state solution. Never can there be. Those Palestinian people want one thing and one thing only, and that's to eradicate the Jew. They don't want to live in peace with them. None of the Arabs. But I believe we're seeing this come to pass. I want, I want to read one more. One more article here. I know that you all see and hear the news. But you don't hear and see all the news. As President Trump would say, there's a lot of fake news. You know, there's a reason why they say when you get on the stand and, and you go to testify before a jury or a court or a judge, they say, will you tell the whole truth? Get it? Tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Because half the truth is really a lie. Jewish, Jewish teachers at a Brooklyn high school have faced repeated anti-Semitic harassment 
from a contingent of students, culminating in emails to the teachers calling for the genocide of the Jewish people. If I ever wrote an email in school that was had any inkling of a sound of that, I would have been expelled from school. Is that true? The email sent from an address. This is the email address. Kill all Jews now. Stated all Jews need to be exterminated. Their doors kicked in. In the middle of the night, a bullet put in each of their heads. How does people get by with writing these emails? Our federal government ought to step in. And these people should be arrested. That's just the beginning. It continued. Jews deserve no... Sim this is in America. This is in the state of New York. Speaking of a tsunami. I wouldn't be surprised if God don't sink that whole state. Jews deserve no sympathy. They are the enemy of all mankind and there is no recycling that, reconciling that. A Jewish history teacher at Origins High School in Sheepshead Bay was named specifically in the email. The teacher told the post that she felt very frightened and now has security protecting her 24-7. The Origins School has been the site of repeated anti-Semitic incidents in recent months. In one instance, a student put on a Hitler mustache and walked through the school halls chanting death to Israel. How many heard that on the news? No. In another, a student called a Jewish teacher a dirty Jew and said that he wished she had been killed during the Holocaust. Teachers have been reported receiving death threats and students have reported hearing Free Palestine chanting through the halls. Several students at the high school told the Post that the anti-Semitic incidents are the work of a small cohort of racist students who threaten everyone they come across, not just Jews. The father of the Jewish student said that his son had been harassed multiple times for being Jewish. Since he came to this school, the other students keep saying to him, Hamas, Hamas, Hamas. They said to my son that he's a Jew, and they used an explicit, I will. The father told the post. In November, Several hundred students in a Queens high school caused several hours of violent rioting in protest against a teacher who attended a pro-Israel protest. The teacher in question was forced to take shelter in a locked office as the mob attempted to force entry into her classroom. The teacher was photographed at a rally holding a sign reading, I stand with Israel. I stand with Israel. I do. Everyone was yelling free Palestine. Everyone was screaming that the teacher needs to go. I'm going to stop. I, I read a lot. I don't want it to cause anybody any young person, any 
fear, anxiety, or anything like that. I don't mean to do that. So, but you know, this spirit that's rising up, and I said, we're looking George Washington's vision in the eye. S something is getting ready to happen, and this spirit will be cleansed. I believe that. Because I believe this is where Israel will flee to. And as Brother Allen has said, and it's been said by others, God's not going to bring her into a land that is already filled with hatred toward her. But it, it said that she would be taken care of or sheltered and nourished there, didn't it? I want the red-blooded American's alarm clock to go off. So many, you know, so many people, even our government today, they want to say, they talk about those three letters, diversity, equality, and in, inclusiveness or something. I mean, you saw University of Florida. If you're a Gator fan, you'll be proud. University of Florida shut down their DEI program and fired every employee hired under that program. Did you see that? In a country that's worried about equality, and all of that. Why do they constantly bring it up? What is it? God created all men equal. I'm glad when God looks upon us, he don't look upon our color. I love the body of Christ. I'm looking forward. Jesus even said this. Brother Allen was saying this morning, he said there's, you know, Jesus in Matthew 24, he covered so much from the beginning to the end nearly, you know, in the, end, in the last days. He said in the 30th verse of the 24th chapter, and then shall appear the sign. Here at the end of the tribulation. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Right. And do you know what? It says, and the armies of heaven will be with him. Who is that, saints? That is you and I. Right. Hallelujah! Amen. I've got something worth standing for. Amen. God didn't leave us, lead us this far to leave us. And he didn't lead us this far for us to get here and think we don't understand. We do understand. What we have and know is absolutely right. This generation shall not pass away till all of these things are fulfilled. God knows who ever last Jew is that will be alive. And he knows us by name tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every hair on your head is numbered. For those that have lost some, you're going to get them back. And mine's getting thinner all the time. My wife said, you need to let your hair grow out a little bit. <laughs> she said, you can really see your scalp. <laughs> Take a look. <laughs> but put your sunglasses on first. <laughs> it don't matter. It doesn't matter. None of this matters. This is all temporal. 
One of these days, we're going to have a new body. Amen. One of these days, we're going to be free from all the trouble and all the strife. All the sickness, all the disease. Won't even be a memory. All the medications and all the things that we have to have to live. No. Be a thing of the past. Don't you love the Lord? Brother, sister, heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall not pass away. I love the Lord. I love you. And I pray that I have said something tonight. You know, there, I don't know, I feel to say this. I, maybe someone, maybe someone, I don't know. Only God does. But maybe someone said, Brother Kevin, I, I've all, all my, my life, I've, I've just felt like I've been in and I've been out and I've, I've, I've just failed the Lord sometimes and then, then I feel like I'm doing good, good and then I feel like I, I failed the Lord again and I, I know that I have weaknesses in my walk with the Lord. You know what? Let tonight be different. Rededicate yourself and your life to the Lord and say, God, even in my weakness, even in my failures, it is my desire to serve you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I dedicate my life to you. Rededicate, maybe, whichever way it is. But I want to tell you something. The move is on for the bride. And there's not much time left. We must make our calling and election sure. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, as we look to you again, thanking you, Lord, for your word, thanking you for your spirit, your anointing, O oh God. I look to you and I thank you, Lord, for my brothers, my sisters, Lord, that have sat here, those that have tuned in by way of the Internet. And Father, we know that you have gathered us together Lord, in this day and in this hour, because before the foundation of the world was, Lord, there was a calling that was upon our life. We've answered that call, Lord. And we know, Father, that all things work together for good. And as we walk in this life, Father, sometimes we, we know that we can make bad choices but Lord, I pray if there's anyone here tonight, Lord, that desires a closer walk with you, to know you in a greater way, to rededicate their life, Lord, may you speak to their heart. May they know, Lord, that you stand with open arms to receive and to help them. I commit these words into your hands. I pray, Lord, that they have been said in a way that will be of help. And that will glorify and honor you. I ask it in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you all. <clears throat> Turn the service back over. Oh, yeah, I do have a film. Wow. It's a good thing Brother Allen's sitting back there. Thank you, Brother Allen. Uh, I don't want to have that thing come down on your head no they would never forgive me for that uh, there we go popcorn will be after church בסדר גמור.
Thank you, Brother Allen, for reminding me about that. In the last days. Appreciate the message. And I'm going to probably have Brother Daniel come up here and sing us a song or two. If you do that, and uh, Sister Carmen, come on back to the piano. And if anybody has a need, as he does, then you come. I'll just leave it up to you to if somebody comes. And leave it up to you until they get through saying whatever you want. Let us all stand. strong Jesus keep me from all wrong I'll be satisfied as long as I walk let me walk close to thee Just a closer walk with Thee. Grant it, Jesus, is my plea. Daily walking close to Thee. Let it be, dear Lord, let it be. feeble life is o'er time for me will be no more guide me gently safely o'er 
to thy kingdom shore to thy shore just a closer walk with thee grant it jesus is my plea daily walking close to thee let it be dear lord let it be world of toil and care if I falter Lord who cares and who will all my burdens bear none but thee dear Lord none but thee just a closer walk with thee grant it jesus is my plea and daily walking close to thee let it be dear lord let it be Sister Jimmy, Sarah, come up. Sister Evely, uh, Brother David's brother passed away. I know Sister Elner had said something this morning to somebody. Wanting, he wanted me to come down there. Of course, uh, the family has always thought a lot of, of me and my family. And I know that Charles, he has had his ups and downs but now then he's gone on to meet the Lord whatever state that he might be in so I pray I pray for the family you pray for them pray for one another there's so many deaths has happened in the last few few days not the last few weeks last few days so pray for the families pray for pray for Mike his brother he's in bad shape too may God speak to his heart in this may the Lord bless you have a good week and pray for one another and we'll be seeing you the Lord willing next service brother Jason prays we're dismissed with all that you are and what you're doing for your people, Lord. And we thank you, God, for your presence, Lord, that has been here with us today, Lord. Lord, the peace that you bring, Lord, with your presence, Lord, is, is indescribable at times. And we thank you, Lord, for those moments. Now, Lord, for the needs among the people, God, I ask, oh, God, that there's been, there's been some deaths of loved ones, Lord, I ask, oh, God, that you, Lord, comfort the loved ones and that you help them in the time of need. And, Lord, may you minister unto them, Lord, in only the way that you can, Lord. And, Lord, I ask, oh God, for out, throughout this week, Lord, may you help us to present ourselves as a light in this dark world, Lord. And, Lord, may you help us to every day present ourselves as Christians, God. And, Lord, bring us back to the next appointed time 
Lord willing, God, and we thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing and all that you have done. And Lord, we thank you, God, for all the wonderful things that lay in store for that of us, your people. Thank you, Father, for all, everything, for it's in the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ, we humbly ask these things.